Okay, it's New Year's Day, January 1st, and we're doing week seven. We skipped through week six. It's kind of slowed down because uh, they just slowed down. But we're setting at an average now after this week. Uh, we've got, uh, we're getting closer to 50%. We're, at, we're up to 60 survived and 74 had bit the dust and most of those were early uh, on these some of these this one doesn't look all that well it looks like it's gonna have maybe problems but we're gonna go ahead and pot this up give it uh, more of a reserve for the even moisture and uh, room for its roots just to stretch out and we've got and that one there was a uh, Violet Day Bardot. And then we got a Texas Ever bearing that's rooting out and and got another Texas Ever bearing that's uh, it's really going af after it. So, uh, and you can see uh, these leafing out like that, it's, it's fixing to go real, real quick. We do have a lot more. We've checked them all. We've got some that's really close, but uh, they're, uh, uh, chances are they're next, next week or sometime midweek. Now, I do have these over here, and these are questionable ones, uh, certain things. Now, uh, this one, since I've put it over here and taken a little better care of it because it was trying to get the fungus, it has actually started putting a leaf out so it shouldn't be long putting roots and it should uh survive some of these are questionable because they're they're starting to dry and i figured i'd give them just a little closer attention uh, to make sure that uh you know they had better chance but these have these have been some of the first ones on the the 13th that of uh november so anyway uh, that's where we're sitting in here. Uh, I'm going to pot these few right here up. And as we normally do when we pot these up, and this would be for the newbies, uh, we take and we go to a one gallon pot. Well, these might be a little smaller than one gallon. And uh, what we're going to do, we're just going to put our uh, mix in around here. Yeah, we'll go out to the greenhouse here after we get finished up and we'll look at everything that's come along so far. Uh, we've got a pretty good selection so far of uh, ones that survive some uh, new varieties that once I get them into their one gallon pots then I put them on my list and I start to get over uh, 20 varieties I'm hoping by the time I get finished I should have pretty close to, to uh, 30 different varieties and for those of you that don't have a lot of varieties of figs uh, you don't know what you're missing, and if you say you don't like figs, uh, you haven't uh, tasted very many because a lot of these figs are, uh, now we lost a leaf on that, but we're not going to be too concerned. We get it in here, and uh, what I've been doing as soon as I pot these up, I've been taking and uh, giving these a good treatment for fungal gnats and and since I've been doing that I think the survival rates went up too I've got uh, basically got rid of the fungus problem if you go back and and you can see where we had quite a bit of loss from the fungus and this here uh, looks like it's struggling a little bit and it should it should come back better make sure I put that tag I'll be having a variety that'll be unknown again that that tends to happen whether i lose a tag when i'm moving them i happen to pull one out and don't catch it 
or uh, potting them up. If a, if it's just one normally and I catch the tag, I can find out which one it is. But anyway, uh, this is the easiest way i found to pot them up. It, it seems to work real well, gives them a good contact. And I don't disturb the roots like you would if you were uh, rooting them in peat or uh, wood bark mulch or something. It's wood shavings. Uh, I don't have that problem uh, disturbing the roots. And so when I bring them up, they seem to do real good as far as uh, uh, no, they don't even notice they've been transplanted. And they're not even close to getting root bound. So what that does is uh, keeps their energy going. They just uh, go on like nothing's ever happened to them. Uh, like I say, some of these I might, might end up uh, having a struggle with them. I don't lose very many once they're they're in a bigger pot, uh, but of course that that can happen at any time. Anyone that's ever grown figs, if you lose some, I propagate a bunch of them, and a bunch of these are are from my own uh, fig trees that I take cuttings. So a lot of them I don't worry about now. When I see the other ones, and I'm watching some close because I'm. I'm just waiting for those roots to come out and get get so excited uh, knowing that I've got a new variety that's coming on uh, that I can get in the ground. So uh, if you if you don't have uh, any different varieties, and I'm going to suggest you do. And if you're where it's colder, don't don't buy a fig that's uh, well, this gets some nice, beautiful roots on it. And it's just ready to go and stretch itself out. Don't buy you a fig that's been uh, uh, grafted because on uh, most varieties, if they happen to freeze back, it gets too cold and you you lose the the all the growth of it. When it comes back, if it's not grafted, it's going to come back on. Uh, as original tree. Now if they're grafted, you're gonna have whatever it was grafted to, and that might not be anything that you'd want. But anyway, let's take a look and go see what those other figs look like. And here we are out in the greenhouse, and we can see how all these are doing. Now realize that all of these were started uh, November 13th or later. Uh, some of them are definitely putting out more leaves than others uh now this is an unheated greenhouse so it does get cool in here if it's going to be close to freezing i'll cover them up with a row cover same thing with some of my other plants that won't like to freeze uh, but if it's going to get below freezing i move them in and it takes a little bit to move all these uh, plants in but it's well worth the, the trouble to keep them surviving but we have so many varieties and I can't tell you exactly how many new varieties are in here from these I know uh, the green isca is uh, one of my new varieties um, I have uh, Ronde Bordeaux that's a new variety when I have uh, quite a few that I've taken uh, f from the uh, ones that I've already had I try to see what some of these more aggressive looking ones are like this black mission or like this uh, Texas Air Everburn the the uh, cuttings no cuttings are the same some tend to be way more vig vigorous it, it possibly due to the type of uh wood that it is that the cutting's from whether how old it is you know how, how new it is stuff like that i have a lot of them that are uh tips that 
you know, are still green that I plant and they, they take and uh, root out quick. And then some of them, uh, like the one we've just rooted, this, this one here was on the 13th and it was a tip and it just took its good old time before it rooted. Once it did, it re really took off. But uh, when you're rooting cuttings, I don't expect any of them to do the same. I have one over here. It doesn't, it doesn't look too good. It had r roots coming out. And it's just recently, but it hadn't, it's brown on the tip, but it's no telling, you know, uh, what's, what's going to happen, how quick it's going to come out. Uh, once it gets roots, like say I bring it out here, uh, and I put it in a bigger pot that gives it, um, more of a storage area. So as far as if, if, uh, you water and it's got, uh, a longer period that you don't have to worry about watering so you can kind of let it dry out uh, and some do dry out quicker so you have to kind of watch that it, depending on your how, how many leaves uh, you know how vigorous it is it's going to take more water just realize that and once they get to a certain point uh, it's kind of like these bigger ones and I don't know when these were exactly put out here but once they start showing roots at the bottom uh, I'll move them to another pot uh, because that's just going to ensure that they're going to be that much bigger when it comes springtime and I put them out. But anyway, I hope you, uh, this kind of gets you to get a little bit more excited about the different fig varieties. And hopefully this year I can do it. I'll have enough of them that are producing at one time that I can do a, a fig tasting and give you uh, my impression of the flavors from them because I know I really do have some tasty figs. Of course, I've n I haven't found any of mine that I don't like. And they usually say they get better with age. So after the tree gets a couple years old, it's uh, a lot of times it'll have even better flavor. So, but anyway, this is Kenny with Gardening Simplified. And if you want to see more, just hit the subscribe. Give it a big thumbs up. Enjoy your garden experience.